So I'm Dan Lavalley. I'm a consultant with Do It Academic Technology. And um, my role generally is to help faculty and instructors work with content authoring tools, uh, which include things like Adobe Captivate. It could include things like Photoshop. You just heard about CSCR. So there's kind of a whole suite of tools uh, that I can work with you on. Uh, I met half of you last week. <laughs> uh, I'm Josh Harder, in addition to being the administrator for Kaltura on campus and a little service group inside of Learn UW called Media Delivery. I'm a member of Dan's little service group called Content Authoring, and um, I also assist with tools like CSCR and Captivate and other things as well. So, First, we're going to talk a little bit about Captivate. Before I jump into that, though, I did try to send everyone who registered a message just to say, hey, please install Captivate if you want to do the hands-on session, because it takes forever to download. Uh, if you didn't get that message or you didn't get a chance to install it, I have the installers here in a folder called Captivate Mac and Captivate Win. If you'd like to try installing it, let me know, and I will bring the USB drive over to you. You might or might not get it installed by the time we start the hands-on stuff. So I'm going to just dive in and feel free to just kind of interrupt me. It's, I think, a small enough group that uh, you don't have to wait until the end or anything to ask your questions. I'd like this to be more conversational if we can. Uh, I'm sure we'll have plenty of time for the hands-on session uh, after we get done with the information uh, overload. So, um, you know, why would you use Captivate? In, we're here and we're going to be showing you kind of the most common use case. It's for, hey, I have information I want to deliver online. I want to do a lecture or a micro lecture online. My students will review the information before they come to class. Um, we have it in kind of one of our recommended tools because it is cross-platform. You can use it on Windows or a Mac. You can load your project files from one to the other. You can kind of go back and forth if you want. It's an Adobe product. And I'm a, I don't want to say Adobe fanboy, but I'm a big Adobe user. And part of the reason why I love their tools is because they've been around forever. They have really excellent support through the Adobe website. There's a large active community of users of their tools. So if we click on the link here, you'll see, uh, you know, maybe it's 11 p.m. on a Sunday. And you know you're not going to be able to get a hold of anybody here at AT, so you say, well, I'm going to see if somebody else has had my same question online, or maybe you post it and you get a response in an hour, even though you know it's the middle of the night. So here we can see there was questions posted seven minutes ago, 22 minutes ago, 38 minutes ago. So there's clearly a lot of people using this tool for a lot of different things. A lot of different things. You'll see a lot of diversity. Um, typically, a lot of the responses are uh, corporate training based. It has traditionally been used in that venue a lot, um, but it's being used in other areas as well. So, relatively recently, and I mean, probably with, I don't know, is it has it been like a year, year and a half at this point for the Adobe license? Yeah, I think it's two years. Two years. So time flies when you're having fun. Um, at one point in time, the Adobe tools for UW system folks were fairly expensive. Um, even though they were reduced costs from the commercial cost, you, you were still paying a few hundred dollars, uh, up to like $500 for something like Captivate. UW system has set up an enterprise license agreement with Adobe, which means that if you are an instructor or a staff member here at UW-Madison, you can download and use these, this tool for free. Uh, no cost for you. Hopefully you were able to download it. I know that uh, we haven't quite answered the uh, UW extension question yet, but hopefully soon. Yeah, I used to have- What do you mean by for now? That sounds kind of ominous. So Contracts I, always get renegotiated, so. Yeah, I, am, I, am, I would rather be completely upfront about what I know and what I don't know than leave something out that could cause you consternation five years down the road, like, hey, you got me hooked on this program, and now it's 2020, and UW System has no longer licensed this product. So Josh is exactly right. Considering what's going on with the budget, you know, who knows what's going to happen a few years from now. 
That doesn't mean you couldn't buy your own license for Captivate and continue using it. Previously, as for that, is there a license required to use the products of it, or just to no, produce content? No, just to create and edit your content. So at the very least, whatever I made will still be available. Yep, your you just okay. wouldn't be able to edit it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah and um, I don't know if I should go down this road, but I think it's likely that even if in five years UW System would choose to not license it, uh, there would like the the computer labs would probably. I can't guarantee it because I don't run them, but. I'm guessing that campus would try to make licenses for the Adobe software available at various places on campus to use at central resources. Um, I used to have, be a little bit more ambivalent about Captivate because the interface felt a little clunky. Um, it's not that it's perfect now, but it's gotten a lot easier to use over the last couple versions. From Captivate 7 to 8, I think it was a big leap. And from 8 to 9, there weren't as many changes, but they're, they're, they're definitely working at making the software easier to use. Uh, one thing that you can do, and we'll show you how to do this, is it allows you to do per slide updating. And the reason that I mention this is if you use uh, like screen capture tools, I don't know if, if you were here last week and were here for Capture Space Lite, you saw that you could capture you know, a five minute or 10 minute or 15 minute uh, little micro lecture but then it wasn't, it's not super easy to say, well, you know, it's now two years down the road and I need to edit this one section on this one slide. With Captivate, if you keep your source files, you can just load your project up, edit out the audio or change, edit the text on the slide and then re-export or publish your project and you'll be good to go. You don't have to go and re-record the entire 15 minutes of your micro lecture. I could take the next one. Okay. Uh, so really important uh, for those of you who were here last week for the Kaltura Media Space conversation, uh, one of the key points was Flash is bad. So it used to be that Captivate only exported to Flash, but now it plays nicely with HTML5 and exports to HTML5. Also, uh, there's a lot of export options. If you wanted to, you could just export everything to a video and then put it in YouTube or Kaltura if you wanted to. Um, I believe there's even still options to even put everything inside of a PDF or as an application that could be run on computers as well. So there's a lot of diverse different uh, export formats. And in that area, I don't know if we mentioned this later in the presentation, uh, they've also uh, significantly updated Captivate to allow it to flex the presentation size to be adaptable for whatever device it's on. So if it's on a computer screen, it's bigger, and then if it gets smaller on a tablet, it flexes the, uh, you could set it up to flex the layout and presentation of the stuff, and then even for mobile as well. We'll actually demo that. It's something called responsive design. So I don't want to scare you, but at the same time, I, I want to show you all the cool things that this tool can do. So we're gonna be showing you the very basic stuff. How to put a lecture online, maybe how to add some questions. But Captivate can do a lot more than that. So it's a tool that you can definitely grow into. Um, you know, you can start by doing lectures, you get comfortable with that, doing that for a year or two, and you decide, well, you know, I wanna do something a little more interactive and complex. Well, Captivate will allow you to do that. So we already talked about online lectures. You can also do software demonstrations because Captivate has a screen capture utility built right into it. So you can lecture for a few slides and then maybe you jump out to a discipline specific tool and you say, okay, I'm gonna show you how to do this statistical analysis now in SPSS for a few minutes. And then you're gonna go back to your lecture. And then you're gonna ask a few multiple choice questions. You can um, do case-based scenarios. So next week you're gonna hear about CSCR. You can do similar sorts of things here in Captivate. And just uh, something to point out with the software demonstrations, uh, Captivate does not offer the feature of recording your webcam. So if you're doing an online only course and you want your face in the lecture presentations, it doesn't record the webcam. So, so I was kind of hinting at the complex learning objects. Uh, we've got a few demos here. Uh, I just recorded this one uh, today just because I wanted something reasonably simple to show you as a demo, kind of as a starting place. Um, and by the way, I wanted to point out 
that if you have the sheet, this the sheet has a link to the slides, and you are welcome to visit the slides for as long as you want. These will be up. You don't have to scribble down notes. Um, you know, you can use these demos for yourself to review later. Um, so, this is just a little micro lecture on UW Madison. And I'm not going to go through the whole thing, but I just wanted to show you the basic functionality. What I did in this case is I just took, I don't know how many of you have seen, there's this template up on the UW Madison communications website. It just has some basic UW Madison information on it. I recorded some audio just to kind of reflect what you were seeing on the slides here. So um, I guess you probably won't be able to hear me. My audio is not going to the speakers. Let's see here. Oh, there That's fine. Well, it says it's not plugged in, so I'm not going to worry about it. So anyways. A test or example presentation using Captivate. Uh, this is just a few slides on YouTube. So you get the idea. I've recorded, I've got slides. Some PowerPoint slides that I've imported into Adobe Captivate. And you can see that uh, here it's talking about how the University of Wisconsin-Madison is a public land grant institution that was established in 1848. I just want to show you briefly that if I change the size, uh, it will dynamically change the size of the slides. And I'm going to jump, jump forward. UW Medicine has one. And of course, you. And then at the end, I included some multiple choice questions just to show you that you, it doesn't have to just be slide with audio. You can break it up, you can ask the student to interact. This is kind of what I would call first level you know, intermediate complexity, moving beyond just having an online lecture. Asking the students to wait. Were you actually listening? Are you paying attention? You know, did, you didn't just zone out for 15 minutes while I was lecturing at you. Um, so yeah, with that said, your questions don't need to be all at the end. They could be exactly. throughout the presentation also. Yeah. Yes, James. Um, is there a way to build feedback into the quiz questions? Like, yes. you know what they answer? And Com give it a completely. Yep. Yeah. You, you're not going to see this here because I literally created this in like 10 minutes. <laughs> but um, in this case, I'll go ahead and answer. But this message right here, I could say, correct, you're clearly from Wisconsin. Or, you know, if I answered wrong, I could say, oh, you must be from Illinois. Or, you know, I could, I could modify the text to be whatever I wanted it to be. Yeah, and it's really straightforward. Their quiz templates uh, provide you clear places where you could put in the feedback. So it's not like you have to make that from scratch. It's like you create the question slide. It has put you know feedback here, feedback here, feedback here. And then if you want to get more advanced, you could say you know when they select B, you could have them hop to a slide if you want to. Um, you could do all that. That's a little more advanced than what we have here, but. Okay. I want to get a sense for all the capabilities, particularly in comparison to other optional tools. Yep. So you'll see here, it you know tells me, here's how you did, students. We're going to talk a little bit more about the whole issue regarding learning management system integration and connecting this stuff to a gradebook later. I Actually, why don't I have you talk about it? Oh, I don't want to talk about my own one. <laughs> Uh, so I'm currently uh, in an online master's program, uh, MS in Education, and a certificate in Instructional Design. This was a Captive A presentation I made for one of my classes. Here you can see the wonderful artwork in my bedroom. Uh, underneath that is my dresser and my bed. <laughs> That's my studio. Uh, so and I just want to highlight some of the difference here, differences here between uh, the default template and whatnot. So I decided I didn't want to have that timeline bar at the bottom like uh, Dan had in the previous one, because that's not relevant for the students, my audience, for this presentation. So you can go in and check a box, and you can turn off that timeline. And I decided I just wanted to put in my own navigation buttons that they offer as well. I also wanted to make sure I did closed captioning. Uh, and I included, oh yeah, right, there's my closed captioning. Thank you, Dan. Mm -hmm. Uh, and then also I included a webcam. Now, like I said previously, uh, Captivate doesn't have a feature built in inside of it for recording a webcam, so all I did was use a separate piece of software and put my webcam video inside the Captivate presentation and put it down in the corner. 
Uh, and then, do you want to show the response? Oh, yep, yeah, that's absolutely. So that made sure it was responsive design. So basically, if you can imagine, there's different breakpoints at which this is like saying, oh, we're on a desktop, we're on a tablet, and then we're on a smartphone. And so it adapts to whatever screen your students are using. And that's actually just built into Captivate. So there is your mobile device. That's pretty sweet. <laughs> Especially since you know there's the um, big push for Canvas, and Canvas is very mobile friendly. So. Uh, otherwise, and then what I did here, I'll hop through it on this. So we have uh, kind of the lecturing portion of it, but the majority of the presentation the module will be the video consultations with faculty is a scenario. Josh Carter, and that will be and apparently, I can't get this through. module, which is titled "Knowing oh. Our Audience." Um, so yeah. Yep, yep, yep. So what I did is I set up a small game-like experience here where basically you're a consultant at a department that provides IT support. <laughs> and you're supposed to evaluate um, responses from faculty members to different prompts you give them about technology and adjust your consultation based on the responses provided to you by the two different faculty members. So based on those responses, you go down different routes in the scenario, and you earn points or lose points based on how you respond. There's a little score meter there as well, so setting the stage, what we're all doing, give you a little bit of a description of the two different faculty members, and then so based on what you, uh, your interview with Dr. Page, what, how would you respond? And you just pick something and say, oh, I totally don't understand. And so these character models, they're all built into Captivate. Um, and then they have like about, I don't even know how many different actor or models or whatever you call them. And then each one of the models have different expressions. And they're actually, you know, it's a real looking person, so. Uh, so I did poorly, so she's being, she's becoming more grumpy, that's what that means. And then this is what I said earlier, based on the responses to these quiz questions, I'm taking you to different slides in the scenario. And we got that one correct. She's very happy. <laughs> the frowny thing. That's the grumpy meter. The higher the grumpy meter goes, the worse you're doing. The lower the grumpy meter goes, the better you're doing. Grumpy meter check. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just flying through this for the, and so we're in the negatives. That means we're good. <laughs> Not grumpy at all. Ugh. Et cetera, et cetera, almost at the end. You did not complete this scenario with a passing grade. Fortunately, you can redo this scenario as many times as you want. So. You've reached the end of this blah, blah, blah. <laughs> <laughs> so that's. That's more advanced. That's the CSCR basically choosing different routes based on uh, the students' responses to your questions. But it wasn't that really that hard because basically there's like, you select this response and there's something over the menu that says, what do you want to do when they select this response? And you just select, go to slide number five. So questions about that? No? I like the square halo. The what? The square halo. <laughs> the square halo. The window has framing here. Oh, yes, yes. That's, yeah. I oh, totally meant you. that. <laughs> you mentioned not being able to put your face in the capture. Was that a separate 
software you use to capture yeah. the face or just I just used, um, like on a Mac, you could use QuickTime to record your webcam or, um, well actually Photo Booth, I think it's called. And then on the PC, I used a open source software called Open Broadcaster Software. But we could talk, there's, a, there's like a million webcam recording tools out there. Oh, this is the crazy one. Yeah, I don't think I'm actually going to go through this in detail. I'm going to just kind of show you that it's here. If you want to see something that, like, that's produced by somebody who does this day in and day out. This is kind of the level of complexity you can achieve with Captivate. It's something that essentially looks like an online application. But the link is in the presentation. You have a link to the presentation, so you can take a look at it if you're curious to see what's possible. You can see here they embedded a YouTube video. That's really easy and straightforward. Sure. <laughs> Wait, so again, I'm not going to go through this in detail, but you can see that you can do some pretty crazy complex things with this tool if you want. So I did want to include the instructions on where to download this just in case somebody didn't see the instructions from before. And we wanted to include a few of our kind of best practices or recommendations on Captivate. I think you've probably already heard us kind of hint at the fact that, you know, just start simple. Don't, don't start trying to map out some big, complex, ambitious online application. I 100% recommend you just start with putting your lecture online. Get comfortable doing that. Once you're comfortable doing that, maybe add some multiple choice questions. Once you've gotten kind of the hang of that, maybe then you, you could consider connecting it to your grade book. This is a whole other bullet point, so we'll, we'll go there in a bit. Um, and then guess, maybe once you do that, then think about maybe creating multiple scenarios just so you're comfortable with the tool by the time you get to that point. But like, really it's your you know, instructional objectives that should drive the use of the tool. We don't want you to see like a cool complex thing and think, well, I've got to do that. When, all you, when what you really want is to put your lecture online, that's fine. And we will totally help you do that. So um, yeah, start small. If you decide to bring your PowerPoint slides in to Captivate, you want to double check to make sure that the formatting uh, is correct. Because occasionally there can be some odd little changes or glitches. Uh, if you really get into using Captivate to put your stuff online, we'd actually recommend that you just start from Captivate. You know, you can enter text and insert pictures and videos and everything right from inside Captivate. And you'll have, I would say, better luck if you just start from reading Captivate. But a first step is definitely importing your PowerPoint slides and just double checking to make sure they look good. I mentioned this in the email, but uh, we highly recommend that you use a headset. Your laptop has a webcam and a mic and speakers, but you're going to get 10 times better sound quality if you use a headset. Ideally, I'd say find a you know, nice quiet space to work in, but I know that sometimes that's not all, always an option. Um, I'll show you a little bit about uh, using a headset when I do the, or when Josh and I do the uh, hands-on demo. And for the last point, you just, uh, if you're recording your audio in Captivate, you always have to have audio in, on every slide if you're going to export it to a video and bring it into media space. But that's getting a little down in the weeds, so. Yeah, so there, there are multiple ways to publish a Captivate presentation. And what you saw with Josh's presentation, this is essentially, it's a small little mini website. It's got HTML files and JPEG files and video files, and the student can load those on, you can load those on a website, or you can load them inside an LMS, like D2L, or Canvas, or Moodle. But you can also export a video file. If, for example, you don't feel the students need to be interacting with the presentation, you know, you, you don't need to, them to select answers for a quiz, or you don't, you know, you feel that they're capable of pressing the pause button if they don't want to advance. You can just export a video file, upload it to Kaltura, and then embed the Kaltura video in your course. Right, you mentioned the last one there with the, um, video, the 
the audio on every slide can it be like a arbitrarily short dummy file? Trust There's file? actually or do you have to have silence for as long as you intend it to be up. You can actually, there's a feature inside Captivate where you could just put silence in there for audio. Um, but yeah, for whatever length you want it up. And also, part of figuring out what you're doing with Captivate is determining whether or not you want to dictate the length of time a slide is on the screen or if you want to allow the student to progress on their own. So you could decide both of those. But either way, this is if you happen to go down that route of exporting your entire Captivate presentation to just a video file, you need to have audio on every slide for it to be happy inside of Kaltura. So we put the silence as an option yeah. by slide. Okay. Yep. So how many of you know about lynda.com? Oh, wonderful. Many of you. So lynda.com is something that you, you want to pull it up quick? Yeah. It's something that you as well, most of you are at Madison and don't know about system or extension, whether they've licensed any of it. But you can log in here. Basically, lynda.com has amazing online training. And you have access to all of it. And what I do is I go to organization login, say, hey, I'm from Wisconsin. And it says, all right, I'm checking. It would have me log in if I hadn't logged in elsewhere. And now it says, okay, you're Dan LaValle, and here's the courses you have looked at. But let me go back to the Captivate courses. So you can spend a day or more going through their Captivate courses if you really want extensive, hands-on, step-by-step training. Um, so if you, you know, and like I said, I think you're probably going to be able to do Captivate importing a PowerPoint, recording some audio, and uploading it reasonably quickly. But if you really want to learn everything you can, these courses might be for you. And by the way, they have far more than just Captivate. They have stuff on every technology, but then also some yeah. professional development, project management, yeah, all that stuff and more. Photoshop, my favorite. So there's a link to the knowledge base. Uh, there is, this is a page that I've created on Captivate. It's perhaps a little long, but I wanted to have a spot to communicate where you could find support on Captivate. And um, some examples, you'll see a link to Josh's learning object example. Um, uh, and the source files too. So okay. if you wanted to uh, uh, download them and geek out on and edit what I created, you can. There's more, again, instructions on downloading, and links to more tutorials. Uh, the Adobe Education Exchange is a great example. Uh, links to the documentation. If you say, hey, how do I do X with Captivate? A lot of that will be here. There's also a link for now, right now, right now it says to essentially email us directly. This will be kind of getting updated as we work on refining how to provide support on this tool to UW-Madison folks. Um, one thing that I'll talk a little bit more about later is I'm, I've created an Adobe users listserv so that if you wanted to talk to people on campus about using Adobe products like Captivate, you could send an email out to the listserv and you know, obviously I get it because I created the listserv, but if there's other instructors or other learning technologists that are on the listserv, they could answer as well and say, well, you know, for my class, this is how I approach that problem or issue. If you have any interest in that or would like to join it, let me know. I forgot to add it to this page before we came here. It's been a day full of meetings. So there's also links to some other associated Captivate um, KB docs. And you're going to see this term called SCORM, which we're going to talk about in a minute. I forget what SCORM stands for. I was just trying to remember. Self-contained, no. Student course object, anyways. So the third bullet point here is just talking about keeping your original project file. Some people think, ah, I've published it. I'm good to go. I can get rid of all this other stuff. 
And then two years down the road, they think, well, I actually need to update that slide, or I need to update several of the slides. Once it's published, you're going to have a lot more trouble doing that than if you just kept the original files. You kept the Captivate project file, the images, the videos, the audio files, et cetera. So we just want to kind of reiterate, keep all the stuff that you used to create your Captivate project so that you can update it down the road when you need to. Captivate, or Adobe updates their products frequently, so we do recommend, if you can, to kind of update your Captivate projects as you go so that it's not 10 years down the road and you're needing to go from Captivate 9 to Captivate 19. There might be problems and it may simply just not load your Captivate project at that point. Um, this next one is, is kind of a sensitive topic because this is something we got asked fairly frequently uh, when we were at the Digital Media Center. I can tackle this one if you want. Right. So SCORM, which stands for Shareable Content Object Reference Model, <laughs> uh, basically it's this standard that allows for the commun uh, communication to and from different systems, in this case, learning management systems. So it allows your Captivate project, once you publish it and put it into a learning management system, if you have any quiz elements in this inside of that Captivate project, it would allow it to communicate with the gradebook inside the learning management system. Um, it works horribly in D2L. It's kind of broken, and we know it is. We've told the vendor multiple times it doesn't work that well. It's very finicky, shall we say. You can get it to work, but you need to be very careful with it. It works a lot better in Moodle, and I haven't tested it in Canvas. Have you? Once, and it works. All right, but we don't have extensive testing on it in Canvas. Um, we do have the ability to bring it in, and it did pass stuff to the gradebook. So um, it's just if you're going down the route of SCORM, you need to make sure you're considering it um, thoughtfully and that you talk to a consultant about how you implement your SCORM uh, integration inside your learning object. Basically, what we like to recommend is say, you know, it's great if you want to have questions to break up your online lecture. Um, just having students pause to reflect and answer a question is going to give them a lot of benefit. Unless you really need to have that record of that of how the student did, I think you're going to find you're you're going to have to deal with a lot less frustration if you don't actually connect it to the gradebook. Uh, hopefully this is going to be easier as some of these standards evolve and become easier to use, which uh, there's some new standards coming out like now that should make this easier moving forward. Which brings us to Canvas. You might have heard about Canvas. Has anyone heard of Canvas? <laughs> <laughs> right. So uh, we haven't done, again, we haven't done extensive testing. Um, we've seen some, I, I just am calling it an issue in that you need to be kind of cognizant of the size of your Captivate project and how it will display to your students. Um, just do some testing before you kind of, don't just upload it and walk away. Um, do some checking on it, you know, check in with us. Uh, we can kind of help troubleshoot and make it work uh, in a better way. When you say the size of it, does that, I mean, is, is it, Anything with less than 25 slides is okay, or you know, something. It all depends on what you found like that, or all depends on what you put in those slides. So if I got some video in there, does that make a difference? It makes it a lot larger. Yeah. Yeah. So large media break? files. What's that? And that makes it break. No. Oh. So, yeah, we'll we can talk kind of in more detail as um, we go forward, but essentially. Canvas may have a quota limit in terms of it's not unlimited. You can't just put on unlimited files into your Canvas course, um, whereas with D2L, you can kind of put up as much as you wanted. So uh, Captivate projects can get humongous if you're doing a lot of in, in embedded video. Embedded video, or I should say, I'm trying to delineate between if you put a YouTube video in or a Kaltura video in, that's essentially no space. But if you are taking an MP4 file of a 20 minute lecture and put that in your Captivate project, it's taking that, you know, whatever. 100, 500 megs, however, yeah. yeah. 500 gigs or whatever it is, and then compressing it and making, you know, you're gonna have a file that's ginormous. So 
something to just kind of check in with us on if you want to use a lot of uh, media. Um, there are ways of, you can get some free storage from doing web hosting, but even that, if you're using a lot of media, may not be enough.